What is really archive fashion? For those of us that are interested in menswear, archive fashion has become a distinct style, look, and community in the last few years. The concept of designers using archival pieces as references is nothing revolutionary, but the idea of everyday consumers showing interest in these reference pieces? Well, that's something new. I'm a bit guilty of this. But what really is archive fashion? And what would the archive of our current fashion zeitgeist look like? Well, since 2018, Post Archive Faction, or PATH, has been tackling exactly that. Today, we'll be exploring how PATH has built an entire brand around designing objects that will become the archive of the future. Feel free to use the chapters in the description below if you wanna hop around, but this video will make a lot more sense in order. All right then, let's dive in. Welcome to another episode of The Curriculum. Starting with a bit of background, PAV was founded in Seoul in 2018 by Dongjun Lim and Sukyo Jung, and is now creatively directed by Lim. Coming from an education in industrial design, Lim has a unique approach to fashion design that proliferates through each garment. I've linked some videos down below that go into more depth about PAV's background. But with this general overview in mind, let's dive deep into their design philosophy. Think about a fashion collection that you love. My guess is most of you probably thought of something that either starts with spring, summer, or fall, winter. PATH completely does away with this seasonal labeling system and instead opts for a chronological number system. This system makes PATH's collections feel like software updates or even video game patches to their main products. By designing with this approach in mind, PATH has freed themselves from the limitations of seasonal clothing, allowing the designers to hone in on the affordances of the garment and how it functions on the body. Here's an example of a puffer jacket from collection 1.2 versus 3.1. The 3.1 version is basically an updated version of the 1.2, and this is just the first example of how Lim's background in industrial design plays a role in PATH's philosophy. In general, industrial design deals with manufactured products from cars to toys. It's solution-based. The goal is to optimize the design of a certain product in a given context. Lim's process is thus much more iterative and less grounded in the social themes that other fashion designers tend to explore. The use of this numbering system inherently presents PATH's collections as functioning within this constantly evolving linear continuum. This continuum marks each step the PATH team is taking to construct the optimal iteration of their designs. One way they accomplish this is through their plus collections, which are collections purposely made to improve on their most recent collection. We see this in the difference between the 5.0 and 5.0 plus collections. Some garments receive additional details, such as these sheer cutouts, Others are functionally improved with these additional seams on the back of skirts, and even entire silhouettes are redone in more daring fabrics, such as the seersucker and lace renditions of the jackets and accessories. This might seem like PAF is releasing unfinished designs, but I'd like to ask, how do we define what's finished or perfect? The 5.0 Plus might be perfect to some, while the 5.0 might perfectly capture the essence for others. This is where we come back to the idea that PATH is an archive for the future. Their ethos is all about capturing an idea at a moment in time, understanding that designs can always be referenced and used again. It's a radical acceptance of the design process tackling one of the biggest themes of them all, time. Okay, let's take this concept of time-based clothing design one level deeper. And I think this is perhaps the most interesting part of the PATH brand. While shopping for their clothing, you might've noticed that each product has either left, center, or right at the end of the product name. These tags actually classify all of PATH's pieces into a point on a spectrum, which we're gonna call the PATH design spectrum. In general, left pieces are more radical, right pieces more conservative, and the center bridges the gap between the two. This system allows PATH to separate the clothing in each collection into categories. But more importantly, I think this whole system actually creates an incredible narrative for the brand. Returning again to the idea that PATH is creating an archive of the future, archives themselves are used to store relics of the past. We can see this process happening with the PATH team as they're emulating a microcosm of the larger fashion cycle. 
In every single path collection, this design team is capturing the clash of radical and conservative within the confines of their own design language. As the zeitgeist shifts towards being more accepting of avant-garde designs, so do the path collections. This season's left will likely become next season's center, while the season's center becomes the next right. This evolution happens rapidly these days. If we take a look at the left items from their 1.0 collection until now, we see how what is considered radical to the brand has drastically changed. But what does this all mean for PATH's narrative? To me, it looks like PATH is creating collections that simultaneously capture the everyday and the experimental. Each collection becomes a snapshot of the current fashion cycle in the unique lens of PATH. There's just so much to love about this idea. If you think about it, most brands are either referencing things of the past, like a movie or historical event, or maybe they create a vision for the future. But how often do brands directly concern themselves with the present? While it doesn't sound that impressive, creating designs that capture the present can open up a brand to a lot more criticism. There is simply more room for someone to say, this is out of touch, or this is an antiquated take. You can't just fall back on an obscure reference and call it a day. As someone that has gotten used to brands taking references to create entire collections, Path's pure obsession with this single one narrative is so refreshing. This is also why it doesn't sit well with me when people describe Path as a futuristic brand. The clothing itself might seem stylistically futuristic, but it just can't be. Every collection is like a time capsule of the Path team's present, ready to be dug up in the future as a visual signifier of the past. All right, enough of my rant. Let's talk about some clothes. Before I go on, I want to take some time to thank the sponsors of our video, Essness and UPS. Essness is where I go to buy clothing for our videos, and UPS is where I subsequently return it. Thanks to our sponsors and some sourcing from our own closets, we have some homebrew video to show you the details of PATH's collections. So let's start at the beginning. PATH's design language is generally based around utilitarian and functional motifs. If we take a look at their very first collection, technical aspects are built into its foundation with elements of drawstrings, buckles, straps, and modular bags. Deconstruction and reconstruction is also core to the PATH brand. Examples include seam tape on the exterior of jackets or these inverted puffers that have the filling on the outside. On the surface, it would be easy to categorize PATH as a techwear brand and call it a day. But what if I showed you this? PATH's sensibilities around utilitarian design has become almost whimsical in its subversion. There's a deliberate and playful misuse of technical components within their more recent collections. You have sheer hoodies that do nothing to keep you warm. Jackets made with waterproof nylon that practically welcome the rain with so many cutouts. Wool coats littered with metal zippers that would just leak heat in the harsh winter. PATH takes hyper-utilitarian trends and through the exaggerated use of industrial elements, sabotages the function of their clothes. It's a deliberate inversion, a challenge from PATH, that there's beauty to be found in what is purely practical. If these functional elements are rendered useless, their addition to these clothes must be an aesthetic choice. But this doesn't necessarily mean that PATH is completely rebelling from the functional aesthetic. They instead take a more nuanced approach, looking into elements that are associated with utilitarian clothing. An example of this is from their collection 5.0 Plus, where PATH takes directly from the environment where we wear technical clothes, in the form of leaves eaten out by pests, and implement it into their cutouts and prints. What we find with these motifs and references is PATH is crafting an evolving uniform within its own design language. It's a constant cycle of ideation and optimization, where the PATH team implements slight adjustments to capture the vision of their present. The thing is, this design philosophy can extend so far beyond just clothing. Coinciding with the release of their 4.0 collection, PATH showed an exhibition titled Final Cut. Final Cut illustrates another example of PATH's design philosophy in action, serving as a meditation on converting the 2D into the 3D. In Final Cut, PATH takes a pattern and distorts its rigid future. Instead of being converted into a legible consumer object, PATH produces unrecognizable sculptures that demand to be understood as art. In this case, the pattern becomes something that's more than just simply transitory. 
Given Lim's background, it isn't surprising that PAF is moving towards the very things that inspire the brand. Furniture and other consumer goods have been slowly teased, and we're ready to see how PAF applies their iterative process beyond fashion. Personally, I'm curious to see what the PAF team is going to define as archive worthy in the other facets of our lives. Will what PAF makes today really pique the interest of someone 20 or 30 years down the line? That right there is the most important indicator of how well PAF can execute their ethos. And that's also something that we can't answer right now. Transition. Does knowing more about PAF's approach to design make you like the brand even more? It sure has for us. As a team, doing research for this video has been such a gratifying experience, and we all have much more of an appreciation for the brand. If you made it this far, thank you so much for supporting us. Commune is an experience-driven initiative for those that are passionate about thoughtful fashion design. Our first venture is to actually open a retailer here in New York. And as we grow, we hope to continue to provide meaningful coverage on the brands and the designers that we love. If you got something out of this video, we would appreciate a like, subscribe for more, and follow us on Instagram to stay updated with our project. This has been another episode of The Curriculum. And from us to you, please take care.